club appreciates your presence. I'm Anaik Mosisian, and my co-host today is Vladimir Salario, and we are both the club members, pick up club members. So uh, we're super excited to have you all here. Um, I would like to mention that previously our club organized various events that included uh, public speaking events with club members and guest speakers, as well as launched two projects. First of all, it is Investing in Our Future, a series of short video interviews, as well as remakes of great speeches in the form of videos. Uh, we had already two honorable guests, um, Mr. Richard Pielkosen and Mrs. Susan Dabrian as guest speakers, and we're not going to stop there. Moreover, today we're here to be part of a big start of something new, which is actually going to be new for our community. Speak Up Club is organizing a parliamentary style debate that is widely practiced by Oxford University Student Union and British Parliament. Actually, this event is not going to be a big surprise for the walls of this building. Um, AX building actually was the center of discussions and debates of the, matters, uh, the members of the Communist Party during the Soviet times. But now, times have changed. Um, our students are gathered here to discuss various topics from all over the world. And also, I, I would like to mention one of the key, uh, sorry, uh, key changes in the format of today's debate. Uh, we are not going to have jury members today. You are going to be the jury members. So we will open a poll, which I will uh, describe how to use a little later. And you will be the ones to decide who, which one from our young debaters turned out to be more persuasive. So please listen carefully. Moving slightly on to the debate, I'm very honored to announce that today's debaters are Anatoly Ovanisian and Yelena So uh, thank you very much once again for coming. Now I would like to read out the rules of procedure of today's debate. So the debate will start with the moderator presenting both sides of the debate. Then uh, the debate will start and each speaker will have five to seven minutes to present their general arguments for the topic. Later, we're going to have a 10 minutes of unmoderated debate between the members. Um, afterwards, the moderator is going to ask two questions and the debaters will have six minutes to respond. And then the very last question asked by the moderator, uh, one of the speakers will have three minutes to respond. After the questions from the moderator, the debaters will have the opportunity to ask two questions each to each other, and we'll have two minutes to respond to each and every one of them. And afterwards, we're going to have a Q&A session with the audience. You may ask your controversial or not very much questions to the debaters, and they will have to answer them. So um, for today's debate, uh, Yelena Borayan is going to be against. And Anatoly Romanisan is going to be four. And the topic of the debate reads as follows. Is it right for the government to limit the freedom of speech? Now, you can see that, oh, I'll just delete this. Just turn on the projector. So, uh, so as you see, there is a link just below the question, the topic of the debate. If you want to, uh, participate in the poll, you just have to write this link into your browser, into the browser on your phones, and then uh, choose which debater was, in your opinion, more persuasive. Uh, it, it is important to emphasize that you can change your opinion during the debate, so it's highly encouraged to vote from the very beginning and maybe you know, consider your opinion afterwards. So. Uh, I think that's all for now. Let's start the official part. Um, by the rules of procedure, the debater that is against uh, the question of the topic starts first. So, Yelena, please, your, you have the floor to deliver your introduction speech. Good afternoon, dear faculty and students. 
Thank you, dear club president and members, for giving me the opportunity to be here and talk about a very delicate topic concerning the importance of freedom of speech and illustrate that the government should not limit it. I'd like to start by telling a personal story about a memorable experience I had in high school. I remember I had a teacher who used to dehumanize people from minority groups such as other nationalities and races. She used to call Turkish people dehumanizing names, claiming that they deserve to be erased from the face of the world. She used to insult black people by using disgraceful comments. You even turn your microphone on or speak up. Now that type of speech, I would want to limit. And in order to do that, I would need to have freedom of speech myself. Now you might think that if the government limited your speech, you would not have left those mean comments. You might think that if the government limited her speech, she would not have left those new comments at all. And in that case, I would want to ask you, so what? What would that change? What problem would that solve? Would the hate in her fade away in as much as she doesn't speak it out? Would her hateful attitude also stop, as her right to speech would? Most of us would unanimously agree to answer no to these questions. And then another question arises. So what good is there living, letting her say all these mean things and spread all this hate in the world? Well, the good part is that I heard her and answered her. That's right. I found the courage in myself to transform my mere anonymous disagreements into a concise but influential speech as a response to her aggressive and justifiable comments. This incentivized the whole class to start a debate about the topic and we all, including the teacher, concluded that her speech was rather disrespectful. As a result, she apologized and the whole class learned the dishonor of living such disgraceful comments. This story inspired me to formulate a rigid view that the government should not impose any limit on one's freedom of speech. Limiting, uh, letting people express their thoughts and opinions not only gives us the opportunity to hear and identify hateful speech and answer it correspondingly, but also notice and give credit to the most valuable things people express. To illustrate my point, I want to remind you of the powerful speech that Martin Luther King gave to enforce his efforts to establish a peaceful nation. That speech shaped our moral views today and had an immense impact on civil movements today. Moreover, by limiting freedom of speech, the government would assign itself the exclusive unjust authority to interfere with people's lives and make decisions that will, as a result, affect those citizens without them having a say in it. This immense interference in people's lives obscures people's natural ability and right to a fulfilling life. The truth is that the government operates for its people and not vice versa. Another important point I want to make is that limiting freedom of speech would not let us comprehensively exercise our right to happiness. Now you might think, what does happiness have to do with freedom of speech? To prove my point, I'll reference Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of happiness framework, in which it clearly states that self-actualization plays an important role in the course of being happier. Freedom of speech is vital in the course of the self-actualization process and it helps us become more confident and accomplished in our lives by being able to control the decisions made in our lives and so improves our well-being. Furthermore, even if the incentive to limit people's speech is to give the government more authority 
to make decisions in people's lives, the effectiveness of those decisions will be eliminated by the long-term mistrust by the citizens. It is true that the citizens believe those they can identify with. And so, a citizens will necessarily believe and give more credit to what another citizen has to say about his life and well-being than what the government has to say. Because people believe those they can relate to. Imposing any limit on people's speech would mean limiting people's right to pride, creativity, and control. Imposing any limit on freedom of speech would mean to limit our right to self-development and happiness. Limiting our freedom of speech means taking away our voice. And finally, limiting our freedom of speech means limiting human dignity. Whether it is to silence an insolent teacher or to speak up on the awakening of nation, we all have the right to speak up our minds because every opinion holds value. We all have the full right to govern our lives, and no one has the right to take that freedom away from us. Thank you. Okay, thank you much. Thank you very much. Now uh, we can proceed to Anatoly. Dear Anatoly, you have the floor. Thank you for coming uh, to this awesome event. Today I'm going to talk about why freedom of uh, speech should be limited in some, in some cases, in some parts. So people uh, who said there should be freedom of speech but with reasonable restrictions were not idiots. I'm absolutely for limiting some parts of freedom of speech. First, freedom of speech was uh, always misunderstood as a freedom to express your opinion without regarding others' rights. Uh, for example, uh, I'll bring a, bring a simple example on Yelena, let's say, I'm sorry for it. Uh, let's say Yelena says that Anatoly is a bad guy in the society, in the public. So the society, it means the society has kind of a negative opinion about me after what she said. But she has her right to, to talk about me the way she wants. That's her, that's her opinion and it can be announced in public. But the, but the way she talks about me affects on, directly on me. So this means she has the right to insult me. Does that mean that? I don't think so. Also, in a democratic system, every problem can only be solved by voting. Uh, in a voting system, solution just appears from the, from the voting process, from the power of majority, while the right of minority is limited. Uh, if the majority votes for something to be happen, then that something is, is going to happen, actually. So, a uh, democratic system and democratic society is itself a limitation. Uh, it, uh, second, must of, must of people always make freedom of speech, freedom of, of expression, as an excuse to do whatever they want. Many irresponsible people justify their action. A society without the government becomes is, a, is like a jungle. Such ideologies like anarchism uh, and its followers use their freedom to, to hinder the government. They even use violence to make sure that their opinion is right, while others is wrong. They make anarchism a form of government, a form of expression. They make graffiti everywhere. They, they break public rules and burn everything to show their exp expressions and opinions and emotions. Because of their action, society becomes chaos. I'll bring another example of how society becomes chaos in these situations. Everyone has seen the football matches and what's happening afterwards, after the football matches. The football fans of each team, doesn't matter what the results are. Uh, if the football fans are not satisfied by, by the result, they try to express, express themselves, their opinion, by like, uh, burning everything out in the streets, walking around and, and breaking the public rules. Doesn't really matter if the, 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 the votes, the results are satisfying themselves or not. Then, uh, sorry, public 
demonstrations, violence, and separatism. Separatism, separatism by the way, uh, is practice of separation of a certain group of people from a larger body on the, on the basis of ethnicity, uh, religion, and gender. So these three points are another cause of freedom of speech. Many people think that demonstrations are the only way to express themselves and their opinions. But that, that's not actually true. Nudity, which means nakedness as an expression of art, appears everywhere nowadays and becomes an epidemic in the society. Uh, I don't want my future eight-year-old daughter, let's say, uh, walk around the streets and see that art and try to imitate that art, the naked, nice naked girl on the poster, let's say, in the future. No one wants that, right? Uh, also, now most of the society's way of life could not be separated from this stuff. Not only that many people use this freedom, the freedom of moment to separate from, from, from the country. For instance, uh, uh, I'll bring an example of the Lori Mars, everyone knows. Uh, Lori Mars was actually, uh, like decades of medicine, also centuries ago, Georgian territories. But nowadays it's, it's Armenian territories, right? So let's, let's imagine in, in the Lodi territory there are 95% of the population is Georgians. What if some, some Georgian from Georgia comes, comes into Lori, uh, Lori Mars and says, hey Georgians, let's, let's, uh, let's, be, let's be the part of Georgia, not, not Armenian. What about that separation? Would you like that? It's his, it's his freedom to express himself. But the Armenian government would certainly not like that. Uh, that's, that's basically it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, dear Anatoly. And according to the rules of procedure now, we will move on to the 10-minute stage of unmoderated debate. I would like to warn the debaters that they shall restrain from discussing uh, materials and arguments out of the topic. And the moderator should not interfere in the discussion if it is necessary. Uh, so the, we will start with uh, Yelena, and the timer is on. Thank you. Um, so, as, a, as, as a remark to your speech, thank you, first of all, for demonstrating um, your speech. Um, you said that freedom of speech uh, helps formulate negative, negative opinion, especially, um, particularly negative freedom of speech has uh, some adverse effects on the society. Um, in this case, um, I want to say that society, freedom of speech is for the society, and so the society has the right to judge. The society only has the right to punish or reward the speaker, not the government. In this case, the government doesn't have any right to interfere. We talked about uh, minority groups which are being left out. Um, as once Churchill said, democracy is not ideal, but it's the best uh, system, and this applies to uh, the topic that we uh, discuss now. Uh, this is the best way, of the, the best system that we have yet come up with uh, as a voting system. We also talked about talked about anarchism, which is burning and breaking. Uh, before we proceed further, I want to say that we need to have established that whatever freedom of speech we discuss, uh, we discuss within the legal framework. Everything, every uh, speech uh, demonstration and uh, expression should be within the legal framework. We also talked about separatism uh, that a guy might say, let's all move to Georgia, and that's again for a society. Not move, but be part of Georgia. The territories itself, be part of Georgia, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so, sorry, I misunderstood. Uh, in this case, again, it's the society's right to, to judge, and uh, in most cases, the society would not approve. So it wouldn't work out. Okay, thank you. Uh, so first of all, about the law remarks, uh, when you say it's the society's job to, to, to decide whether they want to stay with Armenia or not, it's, we're just imagining the situation. Uh, what about the situation with Catalonia? Why wouldn't they, well, why wouldn't the, the Spain let the Catalonia like, set, be separate, be a nation state? 
What, what was the issue with that? Spain is a democratic country, it's in Europe, it's in UN, there's NATO, uh, it has NATO defense and everything. So what was the issue with that? It's a democratic society, right? It's not fully working, it's not really working well. What Churchill said about, demo about democracy and the democratic country, we can compare that to, to what Lenin said. In, 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 the, in their time, in their time it, was, it was great. Who could imagine that the USSR would have been collapsed? No one, right? In the like 1920s, 19, 1930s. No one would imagine that. But what Churchill said, I, I'm not really sure about that. Also, he said the uh, freedom of speech, freedom of expression improves people's well-being. What about, what about the ones who, who, who were insulted by the freedom of speech? What about the ones... I'll bring a short example about my classmate uh, in the US. I had a classmate uh, in the US, uh, he got insulted from her, like, kind of a boyfriend. So this, this girl sent naked pictures to the boyfriend and the boyfriend started sharing uh, all over the, like, let's say, the US. Can you imagine that situation? He doesn't have that right. Am I, am I wrong? He doesn't have the right to share the, the public, to, to publicize the, the pictures. The, the girl just trusted me, and that's the, that's the issue. The, the freedom of speech does not only improve the lives, does not only improve the well-being. And also, you said society. When you say society, you mean the majority. It's always, it always works like that. When it, when it comes to decision making, in a democratic system, we use the majority, not all the people. So this means that the, that the vote, the, the voice of the minority is actually not, not, being, not being listened, not being heard. <coughs> so limiting freedom of speech could be a step to step forward, step to the future. That's my own view. Do you have anything to add? Or yes. Uh, I want to add on a part when we talked about well-being. Um, well, there are certainly uh, cases when uh, freedom of speech can insult people and uh, offend people, but it's uh, most uh, more important to uh, emphasize the value it actually gives to people on, on a global scale and uh, the overall value that um, the valuable speeches, like I mentioned, uh, the Martin Luther King speech. Uh, if we limit it, we, we, we might not, we, the insulting speech might be limited, but, but we will not notice the valuable, the valuable ones, like, like the King speech. And about the minority, a big part of giving people a freedom of speech is giving the minority to ch a chance to, uh, to speak up their minds. This is the key component for freedom of speech. Thank you. So what do you think, uh, if you think that freedom of speech is good for the nation, for the society, and for the people, what do you think about the Caucasians, the Azerbaijani, Armenians, and the Georgians who left the, who left the, the countries to go serve for ISIS? That's only because communication, that's only because freedom of speech. Uh, so the, the freedom of speech lets uh, let's the let's the communication, let's the networks brainwash people for jihad and mass murder. This does a, this tool is an absolute gift to the terrorists from many countries. And from the beginning, when the ISIS was created, I think in 2012 or 11, thousands and thousands of Caucasians, Georgians, Azerbaijani, and Armenians left their homes, left their families, only because someone someone. Someone told, told them it's going to be nice here in, in the Middle East, in ISIS, uh, be in our group, we'll do everything. Through, through Facebook, through the social networks. And who lets this uh, happen? Only the freedom of speech. Okay, so, so you mentioned that they mm, brainwash people through social media. And how Not only. What other specific examples? Can you break some examples, please? Or also they can, like in, in, uh, in some places, like you know the ISIS is restricted in, in Russia and when they, when they say, when, when they announce something about ISIS, the, the media, Russian media, even the fake media, the Russian media, announces that ISIS and then it goes 
that, that it was uh, restricted organization in Russia. But in Armenia, we don't have that. We, in Georgia, we don't have that. So this, this means uh, people should not be aware of it. This means someone, someone can come to Armenia, go to villages for a campaign, and gather some, some people, let's say, for, for prepare for Middle East. Even if not with, with the social networks, there are many, many ways, a lot of ways. So what uh, do you think the government should provide? What alternative, what uh, potential solution could it give? The government should not be only oriented on Western values. Western values are not are, are pretty good, but they're not always working. The Western values, are, uh, the government should be oriented on uh, on the issues to be illegal to do, like like, like this like this issue, it's not illegal uh, for a, for a guy from the Middle East to, to send some messages to Armenia. It's not illegal. Everyone can do that. But Facebook should control its users. How specifically can Facebook and government uh, know, foresee who, which person is a well, terrorist? Okay, yeah, FBI, FBI from the U.S. Uh, rather working on, uh, instead of working on politicians, as Snowden has revealed, as we all know, instead of working on politicians, instead of chasing them on the social media, uh, FBI should try to improve the system, improve the system of social networking. Not only FBI, but the secret secret services of Armenia, Georgia, doesn't matter. Russia, Russia, I'm pretty sure they do that. Yeah, I understand what, where you're coming from, but still you did not answer how specifically they should. I'm not, that, I'm not an F FBI agent, so I'm sorry. Because it is not, I cannot think of any possible way a person can foresee who might be a terrorist, who might do a terror attack, and, and uh, stop that guy from texting another person. Through social media. If you write, if you write a message which says terrorist in like a normal message by via phone, you will be chased from FBI from all the organizations via message. But if you write in Facebook, no one is going to chase you. So this is this is an issue. So dear viewers, <coughs> the time for your moderator to has come to an end. Unfortunately, Elena does not have the opportunity to respond according to the usual procedure. Now we will move on to the uh, stage when the moderator asks questions to both debaters. Um, so I would like to remind to the debaters of the audience that when the participants have one minute, I will tap on the microphone two times like this. And when they have 30 seconds, I'll tap two times again. So um, the first question will be as follows. Journalists are believed to be the guardians of the stability of the democracy and the government. Their freedom of speech is important. Though sometimes it may hurt the democracy, but it might also strengthen it. Thus, the question is as follows. Is it right for the government to limit the freedom of, journal freedom of speech of the journalists? I would like to remind you that each debater will have to answer uh, sorry, six minutes to answer both questions. And the second question will be as follows. Protests and meetings are direct expressions of freedom of speech. This is the time when citizens of a certain country show disagreements to their government. Is it right for the government to limit citizens' freedom of expression? So, Yelena, you will be the first one answering these both questions. Once again, we'll have six minutes to answer them. Thank you. Uh, uh, I'll uh, start by answering the question uh, about the media journalism, the freedom of speech. Uh, it's important to know that there is a, a fine line between exercising freedom of speech and mismanaging one's job responsibility. So journalism is a profession. Journalists need to adhere to professional standards, which are uh, already defined in advance. And there is there's a difference between exercising freedom of speech and adhering and uh, failure to adhere to professional standards. Uh, and also, there's a there's a high risk 
we I used to talk talking about um, inaccurate and inaccurate and offensive news that might be published by journalists. Uh, if the government uh, takes on, if the government controls uh, what journalists publish, uh, there's actually a higher risk for the government to distort news channels, news that news channels would. And there's a clear example on that. Um, uh, of Scott Crute, which is which has the authority to elect um, the executive agency of Environmental Protection Agency, and uh, he now rejects as a fact he rejects the scientific consensus that human activities are caused by uh, are a primary contributor to climate change and carbon dioxide <laughs> is the primary contributor. So this is a bright example of how a politician, a president, may. Um, may uh, distort news to reach a certain political agenda. Uh, and what concerns protesters, it is apparent that uh, protesters should be uh, given uh, the opportunity to express themselves really because, again, go the government operates for its people and not vice versa. So by expressing their needs and wants, the protesters will put the uh, government on the right path uh, in making decisions that will affect those citizens. So it, it, it is vital for the protesters to have this ability to, um, to express, to freely say, express what they need from the government and how they want to live in their own country and, and their lives. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to remind that the uh, Anatole in this case does not have the right to respond or comment on the answer given by the, uh, his opponent. Um, so Anatole, you have the floor. Just respond to both questions. Thank you. I'll ask you the first question. So, should the, is it right for the government to limit the freedom of journalists to speak? Sometimes it is right. Obviously, as you've, as you've noticed, CNN, BBC, and all the major uh, media in the US and in the world are, are kind of began being fake after the, the recent elections. It's obvious, I'm not, I'm not going to make up anything. So CNN and fake news uh, talk a lot, a lot of shit about, about Trump. And this is really obvious. It's whatever they're talking is, is bullshit. Uh, you're on Emily? I'm sorry. Please. Oh, uh, sorry, yes. Sorry, sorry. 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 This is freedom of expression. Freedom of, of speech. Right? <laughs> okay. So, sorry for that, yeah. Uh, and poor Trump is trying to, to, to push his, his news through, through tweets. And. Uh, as it is obvious, everything after after the let's say a political revolution after uh, Obama Obama government the Obama administration everything uh, in the U.S. The, the media became chaos. They're taking news as as no one did in the past. Uh, but actually, Trump has done a lot of good things to to the, to the U.S. The, the rates show that uh, the unemployment. Is is a is on a really low level right now, and there are more 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 jobs than America has ever had. Also about the protests, I think the society should have the right for protests, but it should be limited. Like uh, as we all as, as we know, uh, before the protest, if you want to make a make a protest, like let's say uh, in front of the national assembly, you go to the to the mayor and say, let's say, I want to protest in this place this time, something like that. They say either they approve, approve or not. If they approve, there, there are some some norms that if you if you violate, they're going to arrest you. So this is this is a normal thing. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we'll move on to the very last question as part of the moderator, which reads as follows. <coughs> Big part of the freedom of speech includes the voting rights. It is, is it right for the government to limit the freedom of the military personnel and the police officers to vote for the, for the current government? So, Yelena, you have the floor. 
we have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, the government censorship of advertisements is considered a violation of uh, the First Amendment. Governments can constitutionally limit or control advertising as long as the restriction is content neutral um, and reasonable in location and duration. And if the government decides to limit a freedom advertisement, it will not only limit the rights of the advertising company, but also consumers' rights to information. And regarding the accuracy, again, the accuracy of the advertisements, which we as a society are concerned of, in most cases, the government does not have the adequate information to assess the accuracy and legitimacy of the information given in advertisements. In those cases, apparently, the government should abstain from limiting speech. If a certain advertisement fits the description if a, if a deceptive information, the government should punish the company, punish per se, and not limit the rights of the advertiser, the freedom of speech of the advertising company. And in this case, because in this case the company would conduct a violation of the law, which is a failure to fulfill its responsibilities concerning their profession. Uh, again, this is uh, <coughs> similar to the journalism case. A failure to adhere to professional standards that does not have anything to do with freedom of speech. Thank you. Uh, Chris, could you repeat the question? Um, sure. So a big part of the freedom of speech includes the right to vote for your government. So the question is as follows. Is it right for the government to limit the freedom of expression of the military personnel? Let's say, I don't know, troops of America in Afghanistan, for example. Uh, and the police officers to vote for their current government. Was that clear? Yeah, thank you. Sure, you have three minutes. So, so as we all know in Armenia, in the voting process, uh, the military and the police is kind of corrupted and is under pressure. It's not a secret. So in this case, in my view, it would be better to limit their freedom to vote as being uh, government officials, let's say. But actually, in any other countries, it's not, it's not like this. So in my view, should, uh, their, their freedom of uh, vote, their voting process should be limited because the, the people who are serving in army currently uh, are under pressure of, of the current government to, to vote. And also the, the policemen who are serving, who are getting money from the, from the budget, from the federal, federal state budget, uh, will not vote for anyone else but the ruling party. If I'm wrong... Anyways, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now we'll move on to the stage when the debaters ask each other questions. I would like to remind that if the possible answer to the questions are yes or no, the debater that is receiving the question has the right to abstain from answering yes. Um, so now we'll give the floor to Yelena. You will have to ask a question and I'm going to have to respond. I want to ask about uh, the part when um, you mentioned that the police would necessarily vote for the government which they get budgets from. They might as well get budgets from uh, other government members, potential government members, and there's no guarantee that other candidates would not bribe or threaten uh, the police officers to vote for them in the same manner that the current go government would. So what guarantee is there? I don't get your question. So what do you think, where comes the, uh, the money of the policemen? It comes from the state budget, right? So what, what, what other sources are you talking about? I don't understand. Could you please explain? Uh, do I understand correctly that you uh, said, that you claim that uh, Police officers should not have any limit to uh, any right to vote for uh, the uh, elections, right? Yeah, I'm not saying there should. Um, I'm saying debaters, I'm sorry. Let's not turn this into the discussion. So, dear Anthony, is the question? The question uh, is not clear. Okay. 
Yeah. 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 Uh, if if uh, the current, if you're saying that the current, current government might bribe or threaten police officers to vote for them, what guarantee is there that other candidates would not bribe or threaten the police in the same manner? So why sh why should we take that freedom uh, to vote away from the police officers because there is a chance that the current government might bribe them? Other candidates might bribe them in the same way. Because because. Are you done with the question? Yes. Because the other candidates don't finance uh, the policemen. That's a factor. Also, why would why would a, why would a, another candidate from another campaign, another party, would bribe a policeman? That's because it is a policeman. Okay, once yeah. again, it's not because it is a policeman. It would not be bribed by the current government. Sorry. Do you really think so? Well, in the same logic as... Dear debaters, let's not turn this into a discussion. So, um, now, Anatoly, you may answer. I'm not saying ask your question. Let me, let me, let me. No, no, I won't let you. Please ask your question. I don't have any questions. Let me reply. Let me reply. So are, are you not finishing your reply? I'm replying. Okay. Okay. So, you have one minute. I'm not saying I'm not saying the current government is. Why are you leaving? Uh, come on. Uh, I'm not saying the current the current government is uh, bribing the policemen. That's not the way it's happening. They're just pressuring. They're, they're putting too much pressure on policemen to to go vote for the that's the Republican Party. Again, well, how, why would other candidates not pressure? They can't the pressure. Traders, let's not turn this into a. They can't. They can't put pressure on policemen because they're not ruling. They have the potential to rule them if they become president. If they become president. Well, if they, if they, if, if, if police officers. But the policemen would, would actually look at what, what is actually really right now ruling, rather than who will rule. How do you know that? They might elect the president, and the president, president might rule them at the state, state budget that you're talking about. Um, okay. Okay. So, do you have a question to ask to your opponent regarding the topic? I don't have a question, but I want to say something. <laughs> what you're going to say should be in the form of a question. Are you ready to deliver it? Sure. Okay. Also, without without limiting the freedom of speech, you can spill your country's army and its intelligence secrets to enemies, like it ha like it happened with uh, Pakistan and North Korea. Pakistan is uh, some guy from Pakistan, let's say. Uh, Pass the nuclear bomb bomb secrets to the North, North Korean leaders. How it happened that North Korea has nuclear bombs? Have you ever questioned yourself? Because of the chaos in Pakistan, which really uh, doesn't recognize Armenia as a country. So, also uh, without without here uh, uh, that there will be not also. You have to ask one specific question. I, I don't have a question. <laughs> so if you don't have a question, then you should speak. Okay. <laughs> I think I made it through for the first time. Um, all right. Does Yelena have any additional questions? Like actual questions? <laughs> okay. Um, so now, after, before moving on to the Q&A session, I would like to remind uh, all of you that you still can decide when your opinion was more persuasive. So here is the... Oh, what was... Okay, well, we were having a little technical difficulties. And uh, now we'll move on to the fresh Q&A session. Um, if anybody wishes to ask a question to one of the debaters, they shall stand up. We'll give you the microphone. You should state your name and uh, the debater that you are going to refer your question to. So, does anybody have a question from the audience? Okay. Um, Uh, so in the for your for 
so in the beginning of your um, debate, you uh, were talking about the situation with your teacher. And I really appreciate what you did. It was a good thing to do because I think we all we all need to be more tolerant right now than we are. But like, what about the situation when, uh, for example, in Turkey or in Azerbaijan, people like uh, popular people, I don't know, historians or people in show business, I don't know, they talk about Armenia uh, being the back in the history, uh, being part of the Turkey, or that Armenians who must be in Turk part of Azerbaijan or something like that. Don't you think that the government needs to limit the freedom so there will not be like more wars going on or things like that? Arguments. Thank you. Um, thank you for your question. Um, I think in that case, uh, the government uh, should not necessarily limit the freedom of speech of those people that say those things, but rather the actions in that case, which is not involved in uh, freely expressing oneself. So, uh, if they, if that's their opinion to, that Armenia should be a part of Turkey, let them express it anyway. Let them express it, let them say it, doesn't mean act upon it. Doesn't mean the government should act upon it. It means that the government should let them say it, should hear them. And if it's wrongful, especially if it's wrongful, it gives us the opportunity to hear uh, the same in the example, like in the example that I brought with my teacher, to hear uh, the things that uh, might actually be harmful for our country in advance and to answer it somehow. Because um, if, it, if they don't let it out, if they don't express their opinion concerning a certain topic, particularly if it, if it is a harmful opinion, we might not know about it at all. So it's better to know beforehand and be prepared for uh, possible actions that might be executed upon that opinion. Uh, this was missing from the beginning. 
I think. And if this was done, uh, <coughs> many arguments would have been even not raised on both sides. Uh, just taking the chance of talking, I like a little bit more the arguments of Anatoly, more um, uh, uh, richer in terms of bringing examples, but it doesn't alter the fact that the scope wasn't defined <coughs> from the beginning. I'll answer your question. Just one second. How it is related to? I'm sorry. It wasn't the question. Yeah, I'll answer the definition. Okay. So how is how are the bribes related to the freedom of speech? We talked about the limiting the, the freedom to vote for the policeman. So this is how it came out. So the policeman who paid two thousand gram bribes are likely or was likely to to give the vote for the government rather than to to be like to be neutral. What is your what was your first question? I'm sorry. Um, my first question was regarding Pakistan because the issue is about intelligence leaking, whistleblower, this is rather much about the international community as a whole and uh, sure. those, that's that area. And it's uh, in every country that's punishable. Uh, so, how is that relevant to freedom of speech versus the right of government to restrict its information to give to its own citizens? So, first of all, you should you should deal with the chaos in the country, like it's happening in Pakistan. But then it wasn't it wasn't revealed by the officials, by the government officials. No, it was revealed by the uh, physics, well, by the physics and uh, the, 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 the staff, not the government officials. But those people who don't know their, uh, the, the freedom, what, what freedom of uh, speech is, what freedom of expression is, and those people should be punished instead of, I don't know, just walking around in Pakistan like that. Any other questions? If there are no questions, uh, I would like to answer the question regarding the scope of the topic. Um, to demonstrate, to demonstrate the full scope of any topic, I think it's it's really effective to bring examples to to view uh, to discuss the topic on detailed specific examples, and then view it on a larger scope. That's why I brought the example from my school experience. That's why I brought the example of Martin Luther King, and I tried to I tried to be as specific as possible. And uh, in the beginning, and then on the view from the larger scope, so that it, when your specific purpose is hard, it's easier to view it from from the uh, on a lower scale. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. One point was to make sure that by uttering the words freedom of speech, in this of the, you, the, the debaters in the first place and the audience understands one and the same thing during this one hour. This is my okay. We'll have the time for the very last question. Thank you. My name is Mike. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, both debaters for your uh, great arguments and uh, the wonderful presentation of those. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Yelena about one of these points. So, you, uh, in response to one of Anatoly's questions, you said that uh, <clears throat> you know you agreed that insults are bad, and said that uh, by limiting speech, you know we would uh, lose more uh, than we would if we uh, allowed people to insult each other. So I'm trying to understand this part. So if we limit people's ability to insult each other, how does that affect their ability to express themselves during an argument or you know, have a good quality life, development, etc.? Um, well, thank you for your question. Uh, Anatoly's main argument is that by limiting freedom of speech, there will be a considerable amount of assaulting speech limited. And uh, this doesn't mean only limiting assaulting speech, this means limiting overall speech, and then as a result, there will be less assaulting speech. But he, what he 
misses out is that as a result there will also be valuable speech. You know, I heard like the speech by King, Martin Luther King. So if we uh, I might agree that I do agree that insulting speech is, uh, it does uh, interfere with our ability to be happier, like I mentioned, to be happier and to have a better well-being. Uh, but limiting our environment is that that limiting freedom of speech it will constrain our right to happiness more. Because if you are offended by insulting speech, you will roughly that you will get over it at some point. I, I understand that there might be a some more serious examples like the Charlie Hebdo example, I think. Um, but in that case, again, his speech was for the, for the society, and the society has the right to punish, either punish or reward him. Not the government. The question is should the government interfere? My answer is the government should not, it doesn't have any right to interfere. So the society, it's up to the society to decide. And uh, an additional remark, uh, if there is time, uh, that if the government does limit uh, freedom of speech as a result, let's say, if, uh, if uh, the case that happened with Hapto, if I pronounce that correctly, um, it would mean to justify the attackers. It means that because uh, Hapto uh, had freedom of speech, he was murdered and it's justifiable, so we might want to limit that speech so that it doesn't happen in the future. So, in any case, we would need to come to the root of the problem, and that's the, the attackers, the attacks, and the murder itself, and not um, having freedom of speech. That the murder, the attacks, should be con a subject of punishment, and not freedom of speech. Thank you. Okay, and uh, on this very interesting note, we would like to announce that the debate for today is over. Uh, if you would like to reconsider your decision regarding being bit by more persuasive, please do so because we're going to close the poll uh, in like a minute. So, uh, yeah, once again, thank you for coming. Uh, you're very welcome to enroll in our club if you would like to debate. Also, we we'll would be very, very uh, glad to see you in the upcoming events when we will reconsider our maybe, mistakes, we'll consider what we did wrong well, and uh, the next event will be even more time than this one. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you very much.